Give me out. Policing in the 21st century is a relentless battle against violence, <laughs> drugs, hellraisers, and organized crime. And it's not just our inner city cops who are in the firing line. <laughs> Tonight on Brick Cops Frontline Crime, oh, yeah, right. drug raids, drug hauls, drug busts, serious assaults, and drunken carnage. It's the weekend, and to police officers across the country, that means drink, drugs, and violence. David Powys Police in West Wales are gearing up for a busy night. Yeah, we're just on the outskirts of Saunders at the panel. Where is you? Show us status five. It's midnight. A brawl has erupted outside a nightclub in Tenby. PC Justin Williams is responding to an emergency call. He's going to be first on the scene, and he has no real idea what's waiting for him. What's going on here, then? Hey, 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 listen, listen now, listen. Right? Calm down, listen. Back off for me now, otherwise you're going to be gassed, all right? I will listen to you. Backup's half an hour away, and he's alone and surrounded. Armed only with experience and pepper spray, he has to get the situation under control. He's not my mate. He is your mate. What's his name? Urgent backup is now arriving. At least one clubber has what appears to be serious head injuries. He's taken a battering to the side of the face, but he can still see well enough to identify his attacker. Now, PC Williams has to find him and fast. Right. 40 miles away in Carmarthen, nightclubs are turning out. The police like to keep a high profile at this time of night. PC Ian Muckle is on duty. He's on the lookout for trouble. Making sure you're all right, that's all. He spotted two girls drunk and making a nuisance of themselves. He's already warned them twice to quiet and down or go home, but they won't listen. Any more swearing from you and you will come in. You've had your chance. They leg it, but it's not long before he catches up with them again. She just started on me. She didn't. Yeah, she did. She didn't. She told me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right, you're coming in. She's pushed PC yeah. Muckle too far this time. Come here, Section 5, public order, you're coming in. Come on. With one of the women turning violent, a colleague has to join in. Stay there. In a you're fucking you're talking nicked as well. In Get a lost. Fucking talking Don't have a you. Stay there. Don't I move. Just chill out. Fucking you. You fucking carry on. In a fucking so way. Awesome. Come on. You got my fucking head. My fucking tablet. You fucking you. A polite request from PC Muckle to behave themselves has turned into a night in the cells for these two. Right, sure. You warned twice for disorderly behaviour, and then we came down here, I told so the one I arrested, uh, telling a female to off, basically. So I was arrested her, and her mates decided to join in, and she's been arrested by uh, the transport police. On the outskirts of town, a man is going berserk in a flat. Sergeant Sean Richards is on the scene in minutes. Other officers are already there, but they're holding back. What's he up there, Jane? What's happening? They have no way of knowing who's in the flat. Is the man alone? Or is there someone else in danger? 
We've sealed the street off, a lot of broken glass in there. Sounds like he's going bonkers in the flat. The man's still smashing windows, and for the safety of the public, the street is sealed off. Police have the entrance covered. The man is not getting away. Have you got a name for him, Barry? Sergeant Richards now has to decide if they should storm the building. Before a decision is made, the man strolls out as if nothing has happened. Come here, sec, bud. Come on, sec. Get away, come here. Get away. Officers quickly get him on the ground and cuff him. Get off me. Get off me. Get off me now. Yeah, they will pinch a bit. That's better, isn't it? Pressure's off, you know. Whatever was going on in the upstairs flat, things have just got a lot worse for this suspect. We're going to check the flat now, make sure. But there's nobody injured in there. Let's see exactly what's happened. Night sticks at the ready, the flat is searched. Hello. Hello. The young gentleman who kicked off was the only guy in the flat. Uh, he's in custody, very much so, for what he's done here. Yeah? And I'm also concerned about his mental health right. and uh, if he's been taking some in, because. This is not the actions of a rational man. In Pembrokeshire, traffic officers Simon Butler and Steve Griffiths have been called to deal with yet another alcohol-related incident. This time, it's far more serious. Oh, he's jumped, is he? A man has plummeted from a third-storey window onto the hard tarmac below. The rapid response paramedic is on the scene and they're waiting for an ambulance. PC Butler does what he can to help, while a friend of the injured man tries to explain what happened. Has he been talking to you? No, No? Yeah, all right. There we are. Just lie still if you can hear me, OK? Just jump. Was he gone? Head first, feet first? Yeah. Was he sta standing on the windowsill, was he? crouching like I am now. Yeah, people do silly things when they've had a drink, don't they? It was actually jumped from uh, the open window that you can see on the, uh, the third floor of the building here. So approximately 10 metres onto the, uh, the tarmac car park down below here. Uh, and obviously he's just sustained a, a substantial head injury. You can see by the, uh, the pool of blood that's here. It's quite, it's quite thick blood, which normally is a very nasty head injury. As the ambulance arrives, the job now is to find out, did he jump or was he pushed? Outside the nightclub, chaos continues. PC Williams thought he was dealing with just one fight, but it turns out there have been two. I'm telling you how I feel at the time. All right? I'm telling you I fear for my fucking life. You didn't tell me that earlier? Yes. PC Williams has a suspect for one of the assaults, but this man is claiming he's the victim. PC Williams has to make a gut decision in the middle of the confusion. Two alleged fights, two arrests have to be made. Right, I'm, not, I'm right. not being arrested. Yeah, unfortunately, you are being arrested. Okay, arrested with suspicion For what? Assault, okay? There's a punch-up has gone on. The guy who's covered in blood has implicated the person um, who's under arrest in the back of our car as the one who's assaulted him. So he's obviously been arrested on suspicion of assault. Um, the second chap who's just been arrested now, he's also been implicated on a separate assault which has occurred inside the club. So again, he's been uh, arrested for assault too. CCTV footage will be gathered to determine exactly what went on in the sober light of day. Back at the scene of the suspected accidental fall from the third floor window, police seal off and preserve the scene ready to hand over to CID. The man is taken to hospital with severe head injuries. The young lady who was sitting there with him said he was crouched on the windowsill and has uh, just jumped backwards out of the window. Nothing, uh, nothing else suggested at the moment. We say that's, that's what they're all saying, is he's just jumped off uh, for, for reasons unknown at this time. He has allegedly been drinking. That's what the people are saying, is he's, he's quite drunk. Four adults who were in the room at the time are being questioned. There were also children in the flat. It's children in the property who were sleeping upstairs um, at the time this has happened, so we're now going to try and make arrangements to relocate those to their grandmother in a nearby town and uh, 
and then start speaking to the witnesses. Yeah, I've had people jump out of things and off things before, but uh, out of a flat onto a car park's uh, a little bit unusual to say the least. Not, uh, not something we deal with every day. He's a lucky boy to be alive at the moment, I think. Back in Carmarthen Police Station, and the two drunk girls are still kicking off. I swear on my little Oh, yes. Take care down, is it? The custody sergeant can't get any information out of them, so they're thrown straight in the cells to sober up. I've arrested one for Section 5 Public Order. Di has arrested the one for Public Order and Assault Police. They'd be processed and be dealt with in the morning then. OK, let's go. Coming up, busted in a drugs raid. Paddy gets his man and don't mess with PC Bainan. Roger. David Powys police patrol more than half the landmass of Wales. Their patch is huge, but the force is relatively small, and with the range of crimes normally found in inner cities, drugs, violence, guns, organised crime, officers have to be multi-skilled. They're trained to deal with everything. As dawn breaks over Carmarthen, these officers get kitted up to execute a drugs warrant. On jobs like this, they have to be ready for the worst possible scenario. The target address has already been wrecked. Their intelligence suggests that a man wanted for an alleged assault may also be at the house. They also know there are children on the premises. It's a tricky one. Yeah, right, right. Does he want the vehicle? And then right again, yeah. See that angled block of four angled off? Up there, straight up there. Step back to the window, open up the top. That's it, the one with the window open is the target property. This ordinary council house is suspected of being home to users and dealers. Yeah, OK, let's go. They take the house by surprise. OK, let's go. Hiya, oh, yeah. excuse me. Please, sweetheart. Hello. Hello. Right. Hello. Hiya, yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, so right? No, no. Keep your hands where they are now, right? Otherwise, you can get sprayed, right? Put your hands where I can see them now. You're right, you dress now. If you don't put your hands where I can see them now, all right? You're going to have a face full of spray, okay? Put your hands across like that, as, as they are. Take your word. Yeah, been the man wanted for alleged assault is hiding at the house, and he's cuffed and removed straight away. It turns out to be an old adversary of Sergeant Richards. I haven't seen you for a long time, boy. Last time I saw you, I was chasing through the gardens of him in years ago, and through the front window of the house. And on the back, remember? He's come back a bit, didn't he? Now the search for drugs can begin. Ex-Welsh garden farmer Paddy Dewayne has the dual duties of traffic officer and armed response officer. But today, he's helping out the local police at Haverford West catch a man who skipped bail. The man is wanted on charges of street robbery and burglary, but did not turn up in court and has been on the run for a week. PC Dewayne has been given information that the man is staying at this address. Hello, mate. Hello. Mandel, is it? Nice to meet you. Good. I'm Patrick, OK? I'm from the Roads Traffic Unit after West. Don't worry about the camera, right? The camera's only watching me. I'm looking mm -hmm. well, I am, mate. Um, I don't know who he is at the moment. Is he here with you? Um, no. Is there anybody upstairs with you? Uh, well... Who? Oh, camera. Right. Do you want me to come up and I'll have a look here, yeah, if you don't mind? Oh. Who else is here with you, you said? And where is he? Uh, he's in the back bedroom. Right. Have you seen Nickel at all today? Uh, Has he been staying? You were staying here? Yeah. He's in, the back he's in there. There we are. Lovely. 
Having finally established from the flatmate that the wanted man is here, P.T. Duane begins to search the bedrooms. There seems to be no sign of his fugitive. Not yet, anyway. Well, he's not in there now, so where is he? Uh, Which bedroom is he in? That. P.C. Paddy Duane is not going to let this one go. Back at the scene of the drugs raid, police have had one success already. The second man arrested is suspected of trying to flush a drugs wrap down the toilet, but he's denying it. It's not yours. No, You're coming in. So. We get social services in and take the no, kids in, and you. then we'll have all these in as no, well. Now we get a van up, you know. No, no. Hold your fucking hand out, boy. Hey, right, calm down now. Please. Hold your hand out, right. boy. That's not language. No, he's not having it. You know it's yours. Fucking blame anyone else. Is it yours? I threw it in the toilet. You did, yeah? For the sake of the children and that, like. I, I just want the truth. I mean, if it's not yours, say, like, I don't need to take the blame for any other reason. Because, you know, if there's somebody in there is guilty of it, then, then they come in, isn't it? Is it? It's either yours or it's not. It's not yours. Yeah, but you flushed yeah. it on the toilet. We found a male who's wanted for arrest at the premises. Uh, he's been subsequently arrested. Uh, we've got another male then secured in the toilet where officers have gone straight up the stairs. They found a male in the toilet in the process of flushing uh, a drugs wrap down the toilet pan. Uh, that's been secured, he's been arrested. There's a drugs dog now searching the premises to see if there's any other drugs here, because we suspect that they could be supplying uh, as well as using. So we're waiting now for the results of the drugs dog. But uh, what does concern me is the fact that children are in this environment. Uh, kids shouldn't be in this environment. And it, it shocks me to see hard drugs like this lying around. The drugs dog has given a strong indication of drugs on the premises. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight lines of that. There's eight lines of that, and we've got bags and bags of this foil. There's eight lines of heroin being smoked on that one piece of paper, on that one piece of foil. And this bag is full of those wraps, uh, foil, basically. And we've got another bag exactly, exactly the same. What is evident here now is that this premises has been used for the consumption of a lot of hard drugs. And uh, to be honest, um, I've been on a lot of warrants, but. I've never found so much evidence of hard drug use still present, basically, at the scene. She's saying that this was only done on the weekend. Uh, <laughs> no, definitely not. In total, four arrests were made at the house, including a woman, the house occupier, for allowing drugs to be taken on the premises. Back in the flat in Pembroke Dock, PC Duane is doing a more thorough search for the bail breaker. He was definitely here five minutes ago. Is he playing a little hide and seek with us? Why are you hiding, boy? Huh? You know why, don't you? It's not going to help you by hiding, is it? Huh? It just makes matters worse for you, mate. Otherwise, people just keep coming back and looking for you, innit? You better get it sorted now, innit? All right? Shoes on? You want to put different socks on, or you got one on one odd one? Good boy. I knew you wouldn't have gone far. Do you know why? Nobody leaves their mobile phones behind, mate. I could see on the bed that he was in, there was a mobile phone on the bed and keys and, and I knew he wasn't going to go anywhere without them. Were you here the other day when an officer called? No? I'll no. just inform you. OK, you don't have to say anything, but may I have a defence if you do not mention my question, something which you later rely on in court, OK? Anything you do say may be given at evidence. All right, do you understand that? Hi, ah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I suppose he panicked and thought if he hid behind the door, he'd be safe. We couldn't actually open the door fully because the bed was uh, stopping the door open fully, so that's why he hid behind there. He couldn't get under the bed because the, the legs were only a couple of inches high, so unless he was a Houdini, he wasn't going to get under there. As he's being put into the back of a police car, he meets his brother, who has a chance to say goodbye. It's your brother, is it? Tell him I'm ring What? Tell him I'm ring See what he is. This is what's going to happen now. The, uh, the gentleman's been arrested and um, he's going to be conveyed to Haverford West Magistrates Court, where he'll be handed over then for um, to Reliance to be taken up to uh, Swansea Crown Court. The uh, gentleman asked me how I know he was there. 
I, all I replied was, uh, we're the police, we know everything. We know a lot about a lot of people. He did say once he'd uh, been arrested that uh, it was a relief. We can finally now uh, get it sorted and then uh, move on with his life. Hot chocolate, you want one now? Back yeah, behind bars, there. he it's won't get bailed again. Right, no worries. Right. He'll appear at Swansea Crown Court in the morning, significantly worse off for his attempt to hide from the law. <laughs> See you in a bit. Although most British police are not routinely armed, with increasing criminal use of knives and guns on our streets, it's now necessary for every force to have specially trained firearms officers. PC Bev Bainan has been on the force for three years. She's just made the change from beat officer to arms response. Today is her first session of firearms training. It's a bit of a big move for me to go over to firearms. A bit more exciting. We have a few more juicy incidents to go and deal with. Different from beat work. Ten rounds in a 60-second exposure. Positional shooting. Targets to your front. Watch and react. Watch and react. There are only two female firearms officers on the firearms department in the whole of W Powers Police. The training is really good. I'd never personally picked up a gun in my whole life. Coming up, caught for speeding, and that's just the passenger. Stay there, don't move. A suspicious package is found floating in the sea. We can't say what it is. It's, it's been wrapped and wrapped and wrapped uh, in very thick layers to keep it dry. PC Bainan hunts down a man with a knife. He's apparently threatened her with a Stanley knife. And a biker gets into hot water. Oh. You're under arrest then. Am I? Yeah. PCs Owen Dillon and Mark Teekle are with the Powys Crime Targeting Team. They're parked up at the end of a long day, observing passing traffic in their Volvo always on the lookout for travelling criminals. But right now, they're talking about dinner. Have a nice um, salmon, piece of salmon for dinner. I don't know why I've got this right. I think the kids are eating any indoors and they'll... Uh... Mm. Think of that. What was the part of the driver like? I didn't see the driver, I was looking at the passenger. Let me introduce yourself then. A quick vehicle check reveals the car has no MOT. Owen's sixth sense is spot on. major, finish the day with. It is a bit of a gut instinct that we have to work on, because we have to sit and see a car go past, decide which one to stop, and have a look at these people, decide if, if they're up to no good. It's experience on, uh, on reading people. PC Dylan's instincts are telling him something is wrong. Yeah, he's debating the uh, the MOT. Could you just have a look at the MOT expiry again for me? Yeah, it's fine. Just checking. He reckons it's uh, tomorrow. But there we go. Thanks for that. No, nope. ran out in December, mate. PC Dillon is not just concerned with the lack of MOT. It's the look of the passenger that's aroused his suspicions. I suppose there's a sixth sense to, the, to people who are hiding things from us. What's your name, mate? Looking at the passenger, he just everything in, in, in me was saying that uh, he was concealing something. Ever been in trouble with the police before? No, I've gone for years now. No. OK. Just put your hands on there for me. Come away, please. Looks like PC Dylan was right.
On the Pembrokeshire coast near St David's, reports are coming in that a suspicious package has been found floating in the sea. PC Paddy Duane is responding. A boat out in the water, um, which is doing some uh, surveys and they've come across it. Um, they've pulled it out of the water and now have brought it into the slipway where the lifeboat is launched uh, for the police to, to have a look and examine it. And they would believe it to be a uh, suspect package, possibly drugs, in, in a bail type form. The package has been hauled out of the sea by the Coast Guard and is now safely in the hands of Inspector Millichip from Fish Guard. Basically what's actually happened is a gentleman and his wife were doing a, an, an adventure trip on their boat and they came across a package which, which was about a one and a half, approximately one to one and a half inches ab above the water level. Um, what they did, um, it was quite a sizable package, they recovered it on, on to, onto the um, inflatable, they brought it back into the uh, lifeboat station where members of the local uh, Coast 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 Guard recovered it and brought it up to where we are currently. The package looks like it's been in the water for some time but has been carefully wrapped. It's been wrapped and wrapped and wrapped in very thick layers to keep it dry. Um, we do not want to disturb it any more than what it has been, um, so we leave it to the forensic lab now to uh, go through it and see what they come back with. Um, at this time, we, we can't say what it is. Just behave yourself. Right. On the A470, PC Owen Dillon is still struggling with the passenger who tried to make a run for it. Put your hands on there and don't move. People don't react like that normally, mate, all right? PC Dillon is convinced the passenger is carrying drugs. As I was talking to him, he suddenly lurched forward to try and conceal something from me. So uh, I noticed his hands were clenched and he had something in his hands. And he was also trying to get to his pocket of his trousers. So um, I pinned his arms to his side so he couldn't throw anything. And I had to take him straight down into the grass. Right, is this yours? What is it? Speed. Right, you're under arrest for possession of controlled drugs. Don't have to say anything, we may harm your defence. Don't mention when questioned, something which relates to a line in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand? What's down there? Have you had something in your hand? Have you had something in your left hand as well? All right, the thing is, we'll keep you here. We'll he also up. believes the passenger threw something in the bushes during the struggle. You're silly Billy, aren't you? You can see what the impressions were. I took them straight down. I had, I had both hands. Face there. Don't move. And I asked my colleague to have a look in the hedge where we'd um, gone down. And lo and behold, there was about five grams of amphetamine in the little bag. Star, what mate? It's yours as well? Yeah, all right. You've been further arrested for that, all right? You don't have to say anything. May I'm a defence. Don't mention one question. Something related to Ireland. You do say maybe again, but it's all right. Good man. Thank you. All right. We'll put you in the car now, all right? Don't jump about. Are we going to relax now, then, and start again? What we found is we initially found a small bag of uh, white powder and uh, it stated it's um, amphetamine sulphate. A search where we had the uh, small struggles revealed um, this white powder here, which, uh, again, we believe to be amphetamine. But once we've tested it and seen what he says in the interview, we'll know where we're going. You on heroin as well, are you? No. No? What are we taking today? You might have you back some of that uh, whizzed off your tits. You whizzed off your tits and you... Why, why do you think I was speaking to you about it? You're not going to get any extra, I'm just asking you, because we need to know whether you've had any drugs today, that's all. You're not going to get done for what you've taken. Have you taken anything? Uh, you've had some speed, haven't you? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It doesn't matter, mate, we just need to know. Because I need to know what's in your system for I'm dealing with it, you see? All right? Well, taking speed makes you worse, you numpty. It doesn't help you, it just makes you worse. All right? it, puts you, you know, it puts you on edge all the time. And so I was asking whether you were taking the heroin and you were using the amphet to bring yourself back up or something. If proven guilty of possession of amphetamine, a Class B drug, the passenger could be looking at up to five years in prison. Back in a few minutes for the slip, all right?
An initial forensic examination of the package found in the sea by birdwatchers has confirmed the police's worst fears. It was packed with drugs. Organised crime came down and uh, took the bail of uh, what we now know to be was cocaine away. It was tested and weighed and is found to have a street value of uh, around £1.3 million. In the past three months alone, at least nine consignments of high-purity cocaine worth an estimated total of £13.5 million have been found on beaches or in coastal waters off Wales and Cornwall. Police believe they're all from the same source, and were there any doubt about the origin of some of the packages found on the Cornish coast, they've all extraordinarily got Columbia written on them. It's the first time I've ever seen something that big, uh, but I know they have been uh, floating up on the beaches all around uh, the British coast. So whether they've um, broken loose from a, a cargo, we're not sure. But, uh, it's nice to find it because you know it's not getting in the wrong hands and um, being used. As day turns tonight, the armed response vehicle is in action and on board is newly trained Bev Bainan. Okay, we've had a call now to Narbus. Um, I believe it's possibly a domestic incident where uh, some damage has been caused inside a flat um, along the high street there. The gentleman's actually left the premises now. He's apparently threatened her with a Stanley knife. Um, so we're just going to go up and assist Narbeth officers now um, with making an arrest. We've got to locate the chap. Apparently he's gone to a local pub. So we're going to go and uh, try and locate him and arrest him. Teaming up with the local police, the ARV officers begin a sweep of the pubs of Narbeth. But it's not going to be simple. There are ten of them. Their information is that the man is drunk and angry and may still be armed with a knife. You're obviously concerned that if he had gone to the pub, he still had that with him. Should If he was still angry or anything, he, he still could have used that against anybody. Yeah, good Yeah. After covering half the town's hostelries with no luck, they receive a tip. He's in a relative's house. They are invited into the house and proceed with caution. The, uh, the chap that we're actually looking for in Nam has actually been located in this property. Um, he's under arrest now. The officer's just arresting him and searching him, um, so we'll be taking him back to custody. We're searching him, obviously, for the knife that um, was suspected to be on him. He's arrested, but is he going to come quietly? 30 miles away in Haverford West, PCs Hugh Evans and Simon Brady are patrolling the streets, eyes peeled for anything untoward. A scooter passes them and immediately arouses their suspicion. His driving was somewhat uh, suspicious from the start because uh, the, the bike was weaving in and out. Uh, obviously, my thought was that he was, he was drunk. Where are you from? Up the road. Up the road where? Up the road here is up the road to Milford, to Pembroke, to everywhere. No, it's... Where? Uh, by the Kings, you know? By the Kings. Dew Street? Yeah. Your bike? No. Whose bike is it? My mate. Who's your mate? Sean. Sean who? Got insurance to ride the bike? He has, yeah. You haven't? No, I haven't. Okay. Thank you, Charlie, three feet of it. No insurance, mate. Uh, it's not his bike. He doesn't know I got it, though. He doesn't know you got it. Oh. Okay. You're under arrest then? Am I? Yeah. For taking, the, for taking the vehicle without the owner's consent. If he doesn't know you got it, then that means that you pinched it. Well, yeah, doesn't it? I don't know if he knows I got it. Huh? I don't know if he knows I got it. Well, how, how have you got the keys to it then? They were left in it. They were left in it? Yeah. So you've obviously taken in it then? yard. Coming up, PC Bev Bainan gets rough as a man with a Stanley knife is arrested. The night gets worse for the lad on the scooter. You are coming with me. And PC Paddy Dwayne joins the hunt for the vicious attackers who did this. He has had a good kick in. In Pembrokeshire, reports are coming in of a serious assault in progress. 
PC Paddy Duane on traffic duty has been called to assist. Uh, I'm going through, I believe, uh, dealing with the uh, injured person. Yeah, it's your information. Uh, we've apprehended one male uh, described uh, black top, black bottoms, um, back of Monroe Court. Uh, As Paddy approaches the scene, one suspect has already been arrested and is in the back of a police van. The others are still on the loose. Right. Where's the other one then? There was, he was, there was two, a male and a female here, yeah, oh, great. who were just walking off. Yeah. So we don't know if the two boys were here, were they? We got the one with us here now. We don't, we don't know for certain that it was two. Yeah. Right, okay. There's a male being assaulted up the road here with the, with the ambulance on now. Um, they've apprehended one offender, but they don't know about the second one. Uh, the ambulance are here now. We'll just have a chat with them and see what's going on here. The attack was witnessed by a passing vehicle. Luckily for the victim, that vehicle was an ambulance. Came in my eye. There's so two guys, this one on the floor, one of them standing on his head. Right, so there's only two people you've seen, was there? Two that I saw, yeah. Right. He said three or four have given him a kick in. Right. OK, but from what I saw, there were two. OK. But when we spun round in the junction up there... The other one legged There it. were more than two. So that... There were more than two down by there. Was there? Yeah. He has seen two, two men, one on the floor and the other one stamping on the other one's head. When they turned round there, he said there was more than two here. Right, because there, there was a male and a female down by the alleyway. Well, the she's probably got something to do with it as well, then. No, an additional male and female. And they've walked down onto Bush Street. Well, it's them as well, then. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, they're uh, checking him over now, Paul. He's, uh, he's had a fairly good pace in. Um, Quite a bit of swelling around his uh, face area and chest and all. He is intoxicated um, and he's not making much sense at the moment, but uh, he has had a good, uh, basically a good kick in. Uh, right, basically what we've got is a call from ambulance saying that uh, they were going to a shout uh, coming up the road here, um, obviously traveling at speed. The, uh, the driver has spotted uh, an altercation going on on the right hand side of the road where the male in the back of the ambulance was laying on the floor and there was another male possibly stamping on his head. They've spun round just up the road there, about 100 yards up the road, and then returning. They've seen uh, two or three people running off down the road, and this gentleman was laying down on the ground. Um, he's not making much sense at the moment. He is highly intoxicated, and he has got swelling around his face and chest area. Um, one male has been apprehended down the road from a description given by the ambulance, and uh, we're just waiting now for an update from them to see uh, are we looking at an actual GBH or a, a Section 47? After some discussion with police, the man with the standing knife decides it wouldn't be clever to fight. He was a little bit um, aggressive. I don't think he'd expected his partner to have phoned the police. Um, I think it was just... They do quite regularly have arguments between the two of them. It just got a little bit out of hand. It's an easy arrest until his partner's brother comes out of the darkness wanting some action. He's been arrested for a You're going to end up that's the last chance you're getting, all right? Fine, I'll have them when I'm with Lucas. That is a threat. Do you want to come in again? It's all right. Right. Dealing with domestics is something that we do day in, day out, really. It's nothing unusual for us to deal with. Charged with common assault, criminal damage and possession of an offensive weapon, at the very least, he'll be spending the night in the cells. About to be arrested for taking without the owner's consent, the scooter rider suggests calling his friend, the owner, who apparently is in a kebab shop. So can you get hold of the owner or not? Yeah, probably. Well, I suggest you either do it ASAP or you are coming in with me. All right? Do you want to speak to him or am I? 
Say again. You want to speak to all, all mine? I'll speak to him. What's his name? It's okay, put that back in your pocket. Yeah, he's doing nothing. What kebab shop is he in? No drop in. Hello. Doesn't matter who's at at the moment. Do you own a bike? Where is it now? Farm. Oh, just around the farm. So your bike at the moment is outside the library here in Haver West. Yes. So would you have given any permission to anybody to drive it on the road? You you wouldn't have. Oh, there we are. Thank you very much. Is he coming in now? No, you're under arrest on suspicion of TWC of the motor vehicle, okay? That's TWC. Taking it without the owner's consent. What's happening with that now? That's going with us to the garage. It's going to be recovered. Where's the keys of it? He only wanted to pick up a pizza because he was hungry. But there we are. An expensive pizza for him because he's now got uh, uh, a ban before he passes his test and. Uh, Obviously, a, a rec criminal record for the theft of the of the motor scooter. At the roadside assault, police are still looking for two possible attackers, and PC Dwayne tries to talk to the victim. You will help. We got one boy anyway, all right. Find your mum, yeah. Right, okay. I'll come back to you now. Two sec. <laughs> As the victim is taken to hospital, PC Duane gets word that there have been further arrests. Looks like all offenders now have been detained following the incident, which is a good result, really. In a space of 15 minutes. Yeah, uh, the injured party is up in hospital and uh, all offenders have been arrested. It could have been worse. I mean, we don't know how long that gentleman would have remained on the floor. Um, he was drifting in and out of consciousness. How long it, he would have been there? I mean, it's uh, it's now five to two in the morning. It would be a few a few hours before anyone I think would pass there and see see somebody on the floor. So yes, it's uh, a good result at the end of the day. PC Duane catches up with the suspects back at the station where they're booked in. There's two males and a female. Um, one male was located very near the scene, and uh, a male and female then were located uh, a fair distance away. Um, descriptions have matched um, the people that were seen at the scene with the, uh, the IP who was on the floor. Police believe the victim knows his attackers, but this may not be enough for a conviction, and forensic evidence must be taken. Their clothing will be seized. Um, there are officers with the, uh, the injured party up in the hospital. Um, they're seizing his clothing and obviously they'll get a, try and get a description of him or um, some sort of uh, scenario what's happened. Um, they'll be then interviewed now tomorrow about the offence and uh, they'll be taken from there. When the victim recovers enough to speak, police will be at his bedside to see if he can ID his attackers. Coming up soon on Brit Cops Frontline Crime, the new police action series exclusive to Bravo. Meet Britain's hardest SWAT teams on the trail of drugs and violence. The real Sweeney comes to London with the tough-talking, no-nonsense coppers from the Met. And Frontline Police deal with hardcore crime in Wales. Bravo's cameras capture all the action as these cops catch the criminals.